Hey, this is Blog Guy Gamer, and welcome to the return of Little Black Sheep Game Reviews, the short and sweet version of Black Sheep Game Reviews. And what better way to come back than to do a game from the iconic Legend of Zelda series? Yeah, well, even if Nintendo wasn't gonna do that, this would still probably get limited or no ads for no reason anyway. All part of the fun of making videos on YouTube these days. What is actually fun are, of course, the Legend of Zelda games. From the very first entry on the Nintendo Entertainment System, all the way to last year's phenomenal Breath of the Wild. A game that many are still playing and enjoying thanks to everything it has to offer. Including the DLC, of which the second match came out not too long ago, giving you a freaking motorcycle as a quest reward to traverse Hyrule with. Fueled by items you put in the gas tank like a Mr. Fusion from Back to the Future, you'll always look like a badass while riding this baby around. Well, except when things like that happen. Yeah, what up, Guardians? You ain't got nothing on me now! Oh no, I'm stuck in a fountain. Hurry up and get out! Ah! And then when I tried to attack the Guardian, I got a Blood Moon in the middle of the day. This game is just full of surprises. Needless to say, I had a blast playing Breath of the Wild. Even if I did get the Wii U version since I didn't get a Switch at launch. Though I did get one after Christmas for a Super Mario Odyssey. This game is also really good too, by the way. I could go on about Breath of the Wild, but we can't forget all the Zelda games before it. Especially what could be considered Black Sheep in the series. The first thing they may come to mind is Zelda 2 for its drastic changes compared to the first game, or the infamous Philips CDI Zelda games for very obvious reasons. And before you ask, I don't plan on covering the latter anytime soon. I don't have a CDI... yet. And getting legit copies of those is very pricey. So instead, let's focus on a spin-off. Which, the first thing of that coming to mind is likely Hyrule Warriors, a game I didn't get around to playing, though I may get the recently announced definitive version for the Switch. Instead, we're gonna go over Link's Crossbow Training, a packing game for the Wii Zapper Peripheral. Yeah, I know, and of all the Zelda games I do this one. That's just what this show is all about! Link's Crossbow Training, along with the Wii Zapper, were released in North America on November 19th, 2007 from Nintendo, exactly one year after The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. The game is actually meant to be a means of getting accustomed to the Zapper, if the train in the title is any indication. So before we get to that game, let's quickly go over the peripheral. The Wii Zapper is essentially a casing you insert a Wiimote and nunchuck into, with the Wiimote sliding in and locking into the top, allowing the B button to be used as a trigger on the grip below it while the nunchuck sits on the rear of the zapper, securing it in place with a tab and being able to tuck away the loose wiring within this compartment and the grooves to guide it in. When it comes to using the zapper, your dominant hand goes with the grip and trigger below the Wiimote, while the other over the nunchuck grip, much like handling a Wiimote and nunchuck on their own. It is a little different from a more conventional gun design, yet as odd as it may look and feel at first, this method of playing more shooter-centric games for the Wii works surprisingly well, at least for games like Crossbow Train, but we'll talk about using it for other games afterwards. Link's Crossbow Train is a shooting gallery game that takes place within Twilight Princess, so much so that nearly all the assets are reused from that game, from the areas you'll revisit, the music, and all of the enemies that are often targets for you to shoot down. The twist here is that unlike other Zelda games where Link's main projectile weapon is usually a bow or a slingshot to deal with faraway enemies, switches, and the occasional shooting gallery minigame, Link wields a zapper-shaped semi-auto crossbow with unlimited ammo. Before the bike in Breath of the Wild, I'd say this was Link's most ridiculous item in his arsenal. Of course, he only uses it in this full-on shooting gallery game because it would be way too overpowered elsewhere. The structure of Link's crossbow train is pretty simple, with nine levels to play through in the main score attack mode, having three stages each with the goal being to get a high enough total score in order to earn a medal and unlock more levels. These 27 stages are also divided into three categories. Target shootings are the rail sequences, having you quickly shoot down targets that appear. The fender stages are ones where you're stationary while fending off attacking enemies often from spots you'll need to rotate 360 degrees. And lastly, there's the Ranger Stages, where with the Nunchuck's analog stick, you'll actually move Link around in third person and hunt down a number of enemies in an area. The controls, along with the Zapper, are as simple and responsive as you would think. Aiming and shooting feels natural, and the grip on the Zapper allows for great precision. But there is a little more to it than just aim and shoot. The Z button on the Nunchuck is used for zooming in, which can be helpful with making faraway shots. Just be wary it is a fixed position zoom. And moving around while aiming with the zapper during the ranger stages is a little awkward, but won't take long to get a hang of. Holding the B button also charges your shots into more powerful bomb arrows, but given the slow rate of fire, it's only really useful for clearing out stronger enemies or closely grouped ones. And if you thought the crossbow couldn't get even more overpowered, in the defender and ranger stages, you can find glowing green enemies that give you an automatic crossbow power-up, letting you go fully automatic with limited ammo on foes. As fun as that sounds, that and using bomb arrows is actually a bit tricky to use effectively, in terms of getting high scores. You see, the best way to get a good score is, don't miss. 
By hitting targets quickly and accurately in a row, you'll build up a continuous multiplayer, miss a shot, and it resets back down to 1. And getting hit by enemy attacks during the Defender and Ranger stages will also take away the multiplayer in addition to losing 100 points per hit. Thankfully, you don't have to worry about a health bar though. Just remember, even if you do mess up, try not to panic. Staying calm and careful is actually better than wildly shooting at everything. Being efficient in your scoring is another important aspect of Link's crossbow training, as each stage only has a time of 60 or 90 seconds to get as many points as possible. You can get additional points by shooting various objects like pots that can yield a fairy or a rupee you shoot right after for extra points, but focusing too much on trying to get those can waste time in multiplayer if you aren't careful. So try not to get too distracted by your urge to destroy all pottery and high rolls since they don't give that much points. The scarecrows on the other hand are another story. Initially you shoot their pumpkin heads to get points, but by hitting their bucket torsos up to 10 times it causes the pumpkins to grow and maxing them out gives you much more points. Weird, I know. If you get the first scarecrow in certain target stages, another one will show up in the second section, and shooting that will take you to an alternate third area with much more high point targets. Clearing a threshold of targets and enemies gives you a score bonus near the end of the stage, and in the case of the ranger stages, the faster you clear all the targets, the more bonus points you get based on the amount of time remaining. Making use of the radar in those and the defender stages are key to ensuring a good score. There is a nice feeling of satisfaction when you do well in this game, and even if you don't on a level at first, the game encourages repeat plays of all the levels to try and better your score, giving you point goals towards the next tier of metal to entice in doing so. However, after just playing through all 9 levels once, you'll quickly discover Crossbow Training's biggest drawback. It's very short. Because before you know it, you'll have played through every stage in about an hour. Granted, with the game being designed as a high score breaking gallery shooter, that's where the replays come in, where you can get up to platinum medals on every level. But even that can be done quickly once you can pull up big enough scores, adding only, at most, a few extra hours to 100% the game, and getting every level platinum is all there is to it. The only other things you can do is practice individual stages you've played, which I can see being helpful if you're having trouble with particular stages and you don't feel like replaying whole levels to get to one. And there is a multiplayer mode with up to 4 people, taking turns on stages to get the highest score, so nothing else really that exciting to do. I'm not joking when I say you can beat, and even potentially get all platinum medals in Link's crossbow training in the time it takes to get the tunic in a casual playthrough of Twilight Princess. Or the tunic in Skyward Sword. Or the Wind Waker in Wind Waker. I think from now on I'm going to measure hour long increments as playthroughs of crossbow training for every Zelda game. Meaning that if we're going to go buy this year's ADQ 100% rent of Ocarina of Time, that was about... 4.5 playthroughs long. I will give the game credit for utilizing all the areas and enemies from Twilight Princess to give some decent variety, and there are a couple of boss fights for the last two levels thrown in, but only having two of them for this game did feel underutilized, because seeing those made into fights with the crossbow were really interesting, if a bit frustrating at first due to the strict time limits to try and kill them in. Apparently the inclusion of bosses was something Shigeru Miyamoto did not want to include in crossbow training, but did agree to let the developers include one big boss fight. Well, two if you count the Dark Nut. In fact, the development process for Link's crossbow training was more complicated than you would think. When trying to figure out what game to use the Wii Zapper with, Miyamoto suggested Zelda, but staff argued that giving a gun to Link would be too strange, to which Miyamoto proposed a Terminator-style story involving future time travel. Yes, really. That, of course, was turned down, with the focus instead on recreating the Spaghetti Western-inspired Hidden Village sequence from Twilight Princess in shooter form. Eventually, they settled on Link using a crossbow, one that can unrealistically fly rapidly, but the developers figured, eh, it's just for fun, because video games. And really, that was the design mentality behind Link's crossbow training. Miyamoto wanted the game to simply be something fun that introduced the Wii Zapper and bridged the gap for people that aren't familiar with more advanced shooters. And he did want this to be a side story to Twilight Princess, but in a way that had no story narrative and instructed developers to not include things like long cutscenes or levels. The philosophy being that rather than rewarding the player with an epic tale or grandiose boss fights, that the journey of playing this game is the reward. While I wouldn't call this much of a journey, I still had a fun enough time with crossbow training for what it's worth. And considering the game was originally $20 with the Wii Zapper and I got the game for around 5 and the Zapper for... I think 12? I'd say I got my money's worth. If you're a fan of Zelda, specifically Twilight Princess, and shooting gallery games, then I give it a go as a quick novelty. Just be sure to get it with the Wii Zapper too, because while you can theoretically play this game without one, it would kind of defeat the purpose, like playing a DDR game without a mat. So as an introduction to the Zapper, I'd say it works, and as a peripheral, it can be used for some later Wii shooters. Of the games I have that are compatible, the most prominent are naturally rail shooters, like House of the Dead 2 and 3, the Resident Evil Umbrella and Darkseid Chronicle games, and Dead Space Extraction. 
Though with the last three, you actually need the nunchuck out for motion controls, meaning you're half holding the zapper more like a handgun for those. That's still not as bad as trying to use the zapper for more complex first-person shooters like Goldeneye for the Wii. Having to still use all the Wiimote buttons on the top along with motion controls made trying to play this with the zapper more cumbersome than fun. Sin and Punishment Star Successor, on the other hand, works just fine, so it's best for games like this and Link's Crossbow Training. Sure, there are other third-party cases that might work better for some games, but as a Nintendo peripheral, it's cheap and gives you an excuse to play a game where you shoot a bunch of stuff as Link with a crossbow for some fast and simplistic fun. It certainly was enough to convince nearly 5 million people to buy it despite lukewarm reviews. Not bad for a spin-off that was made within a year for a plastic gun casing. That about does it for this installment of Little Black Sheep Game Reviews, and next time I do a Zelda game, it'll be something for a full review. Just don't expect the CDI games unless I somehow avoid paying out of my ass for those. Till then, I'll see you all in the next video. Hey, before we get to the end slate, I just want to give a quick little shout out to my friend Danny, who for the past few years I've commissioned to make some of the title cards for Black Sheep Game Reviews, and most recently the brand new Little Black Sheep Game Review thumbnail template being debuted for this video. If you like her artwork and are interested in maybe getting something commissioned yourself, you can go check out her site Dan Creates for more information. A link to there will be in the description below. I suggest doing that first, but if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give a like and be subscribed for more. Plus there is Twitter and Patreon for all the social media and perks that go along with those. Thanks for watching.